What's up, everybody? It's your favorite special occasions, favorite nerd. And today we are looking at this imaginary MR at Optimus Prime. And I'm gonna do some of this unboxing stuff when it comes to quarter scale stuff and, and bigger because like, it's just, it's, I don't know why it's important, but it's important. This box is probably two and a half, three feet tall or long. Yeah. It's huge. This is my hand. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Uh, Adam B, my good friend in New York, um, he's getting into statues now. He's always been into Transformers and Star Wars, but he's gonna start getting statues, and he's setting stuff through me, because uh, it's cheaper that way, and then we can take a look at it. All right, so we're gonna go through the process of this, and uh, yeesh, wish us luck. All right, step two is unboxing it. So it's cool that it has like the old school power strip and whatever the stats on it. So this is the base that he sits on. Tons of sculpted detail. There's like this metallic ledge at the bottom and then this rock formation over top. It's got airbrushing and all sorts of paint deco. And then the trailer is like half of the trailer opened up here. The ba one part of it sits down alongside and then the other part flips out here. There's all sorts of weathering, metallic paints. Blue metallics, brass, bronze, these pistons. Even underneath, if you look under here, it's the, you know where the trailer sits on the floor? Yeah. Oh, this is part of the transformation where it comes out. Correct. And sticks down. The stabilizer. Oh, and the wheels, I didn't even see the wheels. And then we have the main body. Good night, that already feels good. Wow. That is pretty good. Oh God. Oh God. The back. I never want a non-transforming transformer, but this is tempting. This is another piece that came in. This is the other piece of the trailer and it fits these pegs into these slots and then this channel uh, or the one rail goes into the channel but it yeah. it's not a very thick piece so we're trying to be extra cautious that's definitely one thing we don't want to replace um but that does add something to it yes yeah, like as, as that is half open and that side is all the way open Whew. it comes with the little trailer buddy and it's translucent glass and then or um windshield and then all sorts of weathering and metallic paint kind of added throughout with a similar style of deco and then that goes down right there in that circle of the trailer there it is and it spins i guess if you wanted to oh yeah that's cool so then we have one arm and it has a kind of hexagonal connection so you can have the arm posed in different positions which is really cool and rare at least in my um experience with this stuff how's the fit magnetic it's magnetic mm -hmm. god so bless it um, it's light. This thing feels Yeah, light. the whole thing is kind of light. The base was kind of heavy, uh, but the rest of it has been fairly light. It comes with roller as well. Oh my God, it's beautiful. And then it has this connection here, which goes on there. It kind of sits on the edge of the trailer. All right, then we have Another arm, but this one is a square connection, so this may only go one way because it's actually shaped. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you'd want it any other way. And this this pipe is perfectly. Yeah, the exhaust perfectly fits in. It comes with the two windshield pieces and their magnetic connections as well, so they'll just snap on. So I guess you can. They can actually swivel out and stay open. Oh, so you can show the matrix. Yeah, because it's magnetic. But, I mean, I would have to close. Why would you right. fight with your chest open? Right. And then he comes with two gun options that can go on either side. Uh, so left and right hand. They're identical, kind of. They're just swapped. Reversed, rather. So 
beautifully decoed and all just I'll tell you stylistically these guns get a little bit outside of the realm for me but overall they're they're at least painted and decorated to the nines and then there's also a hand and an axe option so you can kind of swap out it's a right hand and then the axe I'm guessing can go into either and we'll try to show a couple different variations so we're gonna go ahead and do a couple of them so here's the hand it only goes in one way it's trapezoid okay magnetic also yep and gun and then the last thing that we have is the head which is absolutely stunning quite beautiful there is a light up feature oh there is a light up feature i wonder if it comes installed i doubt no i doubt it yeah. and it doesn't come with the batteries either which is kind of trash And there it is with the axe in the left hand and the gun in the right hand. And this is one of our favorites also, composition wise. So there it is with two guns. And I have to say, this is probably my favorite look that's available. I know there's no place in canon for this, but maybe there should be. And there's the axe in his right hand and the gun in his left hand. And that's not bad. Honestly, the, the, the posing hand is my least favorite so far. I like either the two guns the axe and the gun, or the gun and the axe, so to speak. And look, I apologize about the backdrop, but I'm gonna have to rethink my entire setup if I'm gonna get into reviewing this shit. I don't think I can approach this type of stuff with like good and bad. I think I need to approach it more so about like the experience and the payoff, and then kind of wrap it up with final thoughts in regards to the price. So the box is huge. It's like your recycling bin is full for the week. You're done. You gotta wait for the recycling truck to come next week. It's gonna be hard to get rid of it if you're getting rid of the box or the shipper or the box around the shipper. All three are very, very large. And then the styrofoam inside is very, very large. And then the piece inside is very, very large. Getting it unwrapped and put together was pretty much effortless. The only problem was getting the base out because you found yourself kind of naturally wanting to pull at the trailer, which has to be glued somehow to the rock formation and therefore causes some stress when you're sitting on something that's this expensive. In terms of the options and gimmicks, like I think it's cool that they have the different hands for the guns, but unfortunately they don't give you a pointing hand or like a gesturing hand for his left hand. So he kind of always has to have the gun or the ax in the arm that's extended. Whereas I think I would prefer him to have a pointing hand in that arm and then the gun sitting in the bent right arm. And I think that's kind of an oversight. I also, while I get why you would include the ax, I, I'm not sure I would ever display him with it, to be honest. It also has light up features for both the eyes and the gun. We don't have the battery, so sorry. I'm sure they're fine. And it's nice that the eyes are painted over top, so even if you have it off, it has some life in it. However, I'd have to admit that Fans Toys metallic eyes for the Omega Supreme also being able to light up is probably better. In terms of the overall kind of pose and style of it, I like that it's like this blend of G1 and IDW, the cartoon and the toy. Even some of the movie stuff I feel like is in there. It's kind of like this like greatest hits representation of Optimus Prime, which is super cool because you're spending a ton of money on it. So you kind of get to celebrate every aspect of the character in that way and I think that's awesome. I think that's incredibly smart to be honest with you. I think to have gone too far in any one direction would have been an error because ultimately as Transformer fans we all kind of like stuff the way we like it but if someone can create a piece that kind of speaks to everybody's sensibilities at some sort of baseline I think the net they're going to cast is going to be wider. It's painted beautifully. There's weathering, there's dry brushing, there's washes, there's airbrushing, there's translucent plastics, flat paints, metallic paints, and even the added option of being able to manipulate the arm a bit, which isn't always a given in the statue kind of format. There's little things that I've picked up on that I enjoy, little uh, detail pieces like the fact that there's a black airbrush effect around the thigh cut in both legs as if to say like this is where the leg is constantly rotating and therefore it's acquiring some wear and tear throughout the years of just mechanically moving around. Stuff like that is super cool to me. So then we have to discuss the price. So this thing is a thousand bucks so we have to ultimately discuss worth. 
right? And it does have some drawbacks. It's not made of stone, which a lot of quarter scale statues are. It's definitely some sort of resin and it does feel hollow. So in that regard, it doesn't feel as high a caliber of quarter scale statue as some others do, and yet it's priced at that level. Another thing that you should probably be aware of is that there is a lot of metallic and kind of machinery elements to this where it looks like it's a living robot. And in that regard, it probably could have used a heavier wash paint wise. It would have brought out a lot more depth and given a lot more texture to those areas that kind of get lost in the sauce regarding the mechanical elements. You'll notice this especially on the elbows, knees, and the kind of machinery that acts between the shoulders and the chest. But the actual materials itself is probably the biggest drawback of it to in, in total. It definitely has a presence. From the base to the tip of his gun, which is the highest point on here, it's about 25 inches. And then the width on one side of it is about 24 inches and on the other side of it is about 32 and a half inches. So it's going to take up some real estate. Be prepared if you are interested. It is a commitment both financially, logistically, and where this sort of dangerous behavior could lead, perhaps habitually. I can say it's a great representation of Prime in that it definitely has a heavy G1 influence and if that is something that's important, I think that you'll be happy with it. It's definitely going to make an impact wherever you put it. It's making an impact in my garage. But know that there are other options out there and at $1,000, it might be worth weighing the pros and cons to all. But I don't think there's any way that you would be disappointed with this if you're pleased by what you see aesthetically and have the space. And what I mean by space is both the empty area and a space that is going to allow this thing to make the impact. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I don't think you'll have any regrets. I think it will be incredibly satisfying, perhaps on a level that you've never experienced because I'm experiencing some sort of satisfaction that I've never quite experienced before, so to speak. So I wanna be clear, while I think that you will find this to be satisfying, it feels a lot closer to a $500 statue to me than it does a $1,000 statue. And that's painful to say. Like I said, I think you'll be happy if you like the way it looks and you have a place to put it where it will shine. But in terms of the actual build of it and and comparing it amongst other things. And I'll be honest, my knowledge of this stuff is extremely limited. But even with my limited knowledge, it doesn't feel like that great of a leap from the premium format stuff I've looked at, whereas some of the XM stuff I've looked at, it does feel like a greater leap. And that stuff is closer to this price bracket. So weigh your options heavily before you make a choice if you're considering making a choice regarding something like this. It deserves to be taken seriously and it deserves for you to have a sit down with yourself and really weigh the good and bad. Like I said, I don't think you'll have any regrets, but you just wanna make sure that you're right making the right aesthetic choice for your sensibilities. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.